Okay, hiding my microphone wired. Have I ever made a video in my whole life before? Nope, must be the first time. What's going on everybody? It's me, Joe, Joe Franco. I've been traveling for the past decade and I've learned a bunch of languages all in a quest to understand. Welcome to Globally Minded, a show where I talk to my friends abroad to get their opinions on the same topic. And today we're getting globally minded about coronavirus. The future. Hit it! We're all probably wondering the same question. When the hell is this gonna be over? The truth is we're all stuck in the same limbo of uncertainty, fear, and anxiety. But my curiosity struck when I was thinking, okay, I did the part one, I interviewed all my friends about what was going on. Then I started thinking, well, what's gonna happen after this? And because this is globally minded, I wanted to speak to some global minds. I wanted to speak to somebody in China because China was the first country hit. And I figured if anybody had insight on what the future looks like, it'd be somebody living in a big city in China. I checked my DMs and my Instagram and I found a bunch of messages from this girl named Ren. Ren DM'd me thinking I would never read it. Little did she know I'd want to get on the phone with her. I, I, I never thought that you were gonna reply to my Instagram message. So I just sent them like a lot of messages and told my friend, she replied, oh my God. And I was like, she asked me, like, can I do an interview with you? Like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening. I'm in Shanghai. You're in Shanghai. Yes. So cool. I've been to Shanghai? I've never been. You should go. Well, now that I have a friend there, watch out, I'm coming. But I don't know if I was oversharing or like sending you all the messages and then my selfies and then people checking my temperature. And they're like, oh my God, that's a lot of information. I hope I didn't scare her. And no, I did, you did the opposite. You got me excited. I'm like, nope, let's get on the phone. And after my first coronavirus video, I got an email from a girl named Michaela, who's an American teaching English abroad in South Korea. And she had an interesting perspective too, because South Korea and the US had the first infection the same day, only the US's curve looks like this, and South Korea's curve looks like this. So I was curious, what was the root of such a difference? I mean, population aside, obviously we know the US has a lot more citizens, but the response had to have been different. But here they were just testing. You didn't have to be in contact with somebody who had it. They have corona, um, COVID-19 testing tents everywhere. Most of the tests you can either get for free or they're like relatively low cost because the healthcare system here is it's pristine, like it's amazing here. So testing was a big deal, and testing in the US is not happening nearly as fast. But it was just announced on April 21st that the FDA has approved a self-test home kit, which could make a huge difference in being able to reopen the country again, because if we could test ourselves from home, that means that we don't need to be outside, which means we'll know if we're safe, which means we can prevent a lot of cases. That is a good, hopeful sign for our future. Now, how much is that test gonna cost is another question, because we are talking about capitalist America. Just looked it up. It's not cheap. One of the things that made me really want to get on the phone with Ren was this article she sent me about mask shaming. The article she sent me was talking about the difference in cultural opinions on masks. In the West, we see it as weird, scary, or obviously if there's a shortage for the medical workers, we want to provide them with as many materials as possible. In the East, it's looked at as totally different. Over there, wearing a mask is a sign of respect because it's like, I don't want to get you sick, so I'm going to protect you, my fellow citizen, by protecting protecting myself, and so it's a win-win. I mean, like the first day when people know about the virus, we were recommended, we were told to wear a mask. Even now, you, you're required to wear a mask. Like in January, February, whenever you go, if you don't wear a mask, the security guy at the gate won't let you get in. You, you want to take the subway, you want to go to the mall, you need to wear a mask, otherwise they wouldn't let you go. Like, whenever you want to go to an enclosed public place, you need to have a mask on, otherwise you cannot get in. So over there, did they not run out of masks? Because the big concern for us was that there weren't enough masks and there still aren't for the hospital workers. It was like that the very, like the first few weeks. Uh, and then after that, because there was the um, uh, spring festival, like the Chinese New Year. The workers, they, don't, they are not manufacturing masks. Like whatever they have in the storage, once they're sold out, it's sold out. So that's why we don't have the mask. And then after the holiday, they start to go back to work and then start to manufacture more masks. And then now we have the masks. We can get the disposable masks or like the surgical masks easily, but not those uh, N95 for the doctors to use that at the ICUs. To give you an idea of how far behind the US was on this mask situation, here's a tweet from the Surgeon General on February 29th. Flash forward a few weeks later and the CDC came out with this statement. Oh, 
Oh, my bad. Guess we should have been wearing masks this whole time. Shoo, people in the East sometimes even wear masks for style. And to be honest, this look is cute for me. I might have to keep this look. I actually might have to keep it because I don't think this is gonna end anytime soon. I'm not saying anybody's perfect up in here, okay? I don't really know what was going on. We're playing a game of telephone, literally. But what I do know for a fact is that the US isn't taking this as seriously as places like China or South Korea did. And that could easily be one of the main reasons why the US's curve is so steep. The first time I heard about this virus was um, late January. So in January 19, the next day I got a push up notification on my phone saying that there was a confirmed case in Shanghai. That's what caught my attention. Because it's Chinese New Year, it put a natural stop to the business. So people don't go to work, um, children don't go to school. So it's like er everything is shut down naturally because of the national holiday. And then it turns out things get worse. So I stayed at home from January 24th to February 26th, like the whole month. Well, I only went out to throw out my trash or I go to pick up what I ordered from the grocery store because they do not allow deliver a person to go into the building. You have to pick it up at the gate. And other than that, I spend all my time at home. Actually, staying at home for us is we're actually fighting with the, the doctors and the nurse against the virus. That's all we can do. So we should do our part, which is stay at home. In January, I believe it was January 19th that Korea got its first case. And basically, we, me and my friends, we went to Japan because Japan's like a two hour flight from here. We went there for the Korean New Year. And when we were on the metro in Tokyo, this guy, um, he heard us speaking English, so he strike up a conversation with us. And he was like, oh, I hope you guys are gonna be careful with the coronavirus. Me and my friend had no idea what he was talking about. Like, I didn't know anything about it. I felt kind of bad. I was like, oh, should I know about this? Yeah, January 27th, I got back to Korea and when I, as soon as I landed in the airport in Seoul, everybody was wearing masks. Despite being hit with the same invisible enemy, cultures affect the response that countries have. And their reporting is more advanced. Private developers in South Korea took it upon themselves to develop apps to help early COVID detection to supplement what they considered low government efforts. An app called Corona 100M was downloaded over 1 million times in a few weeks according to Market Watch. That's a lot of people trying to figure out where the COVID's at. So basically we get like um, emergency alerts on our phones that tell us every time there's a case, like a certain number of cases. Different cities have different um, systems to report. Like they, they report in different way, but basically they tell you how many new cases. Like for example, in my hometown, they tell you how many new cases, where like on what street these people live, and then on what day, at what time point, what place they went. And you compare it to your own time schedule, you know if you have ever been at the same place with the, with the person. So we have like a, a map thing. So if you type in your location, you can see the nearest case on the map. Wow, there's so, like an app for this virus. Yeah, it's like an app, it's like a, it's like a mini site thing. So I, I have been like compulsively checking. In China, they're even using technology, including QR codes to create a health passport that tells you if you can or can't enter a building based on your risk. I asked Ren and she said that you fill out your own symptoms. So it's pretty much self-diagnosed, but they have so much location information on every citizen that they could highlight who's at risk and who isn't. Some governments are saying that if you can detect antibodies against COVID, then you can see who is immune and then therefore issue them an immunity passport. The WHO is saying, I don't know guys, this could be bad because you could be silently spreading it out there. We don't really know yet. Stand by for more. And this isn't the first time that people have tried to use technology to prevent infection. In fact, in the West, we've tried it before, but nobody wanted to download apps that had so much information on their location and therefore it failed. So culturally speaking, Westerners are just so into privacy that it's really rare to think that everybody would be down to have an immunity passport, especially one that is not confirmed to actually keep you immune. However, the graphs don't lie and something that the East is doing is working a lot better than the West. We're going through some unprecedented mentally challenging times and I obviously wanted to know, even though quarantine has been lifted in China, is there tension in the air? Have you felt that anxiety in the air once they lifted quarantine? Well, yeah, because everybody, they just volunteer stay at home like Shanghai is a city with so many people there's nobody on the street people are all staying at home so even though you um, don't need to stay at home people are still choosing to stay home right even though they're not it's like it's not like mandatory you have to stay at 
home, but you are recommended to not go out. And starting from March, people are really trying hard to, to get back to normal, but still people don't throw a party, they don't like go to the restaurant, or still people are very, very cautious about this. Were you scared? That was what, yeah, well, I was because the first one and a half week, I didn't take um, public transportations, I biked to work. That was like 45 minutes by one way. So like every day I got close to two hours uh, workout. That's a lot of workout. The good news is yesterday Ren texted me saying that people are slowly but surely going out to restaurants again and life is returning somewhat to normal. There's hope y'all, there's hope. I'm also genuinely curious about the future of working from home because until this epidemic, there was such a pressure to have these fancy expensive offices that are now just sitting there empty collecting dust and the same level of output is most likely taking place because everybody's continuing to work from home, those who can work from home. I've always been a proponent for work where you're more productive and I'm hoping that after this people will have more freedom and therefore more happiness in their work-life balance because they'll be able to choose to work from home or work from the Bahamas if they still get the work done it's called a lifestyle business you could still have a life while running a business some people they have to go to work because their company told them that they need to go work on site but they will have like different shift like on Monday Wednesday Friday like half of the company will go work on site and then on Tuesday Thursday and maybe also another day, another half of people will go. Like there's always half people working from home, half of them work on site. I'm also thinking that we're gonna look at hygiene, self-care and wellness a lot differently. The first day we back to work, we set up a little health station in, uh, like at the entrance of our company. So there are like um, the, um, the alcohol spray and alcohol rod a hand sanitizer and um, disposable mask and then also vitamin tablet for us. Wow. For sure, yeah, we'll make sure everyone is safe. Your so, company knows what's up. As long as like there's someone infected on the planet, we need to be careful. And healthcare. I, I had to explain to my dad, I was like, I'm safer here. I, I don't have health insurance in America. Like, so like, what could they do for me? I would go to the hospital and they'd be like, oh, where's your insurance card? Well, I don't have one. And that's like the most messed up part here. Because even in Korea, if you don't have health insurance, things are still not, you can still get treatment and it's not expensive at all. People in America are losing their jobs because of the virus, which means they lose their health care in return, right? So then how are they getting treatment? It's what? And on the subject of healthcare, we're all aware that in order for life to return back to normal, we need to develop a vaccine or a cure. The world is seeing firsthand how connected we really are, and I'm hoping that we could just come together and find a cure and a vaccine. Like, we don't gotta play these petty ass games. Like, why are we trying to politicize something? It's about health, it's about humanity, it's about safety and people. <gasps> and the optimist in me is like, okay, if we can get through this and if we can work together as a collective world, then we can hit some other things on the to-do list like climate change. It's affecting all of us too. And on that note, I just wanna say, I think now more than ever, it's so important to connect to people living abroad, to connect to people who have grown up across the world from you, because despite maybe not sharing the same culture, we're all sharing the same issue. Leave a comment below, what do you think the future after coronavirus is gonna look like? That's it, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for daily updates, maybe you're a part of the journal club, y'all, you know what I'm saying? I feel like a proper journalist. Is this journalism? Is this what journalism is? Should I have done this the whole time? I know I journal, but like, journaler and journalist not the same thing. Stay global, y'all. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me just talk like this. But is this section rec recorded? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will genuinely go to Shanghai and meet you, and we will actually be friends. Oh my god, please, come. Please come to Shanghai. I need to learn Mandarin, too. Watch out. I'll call you for that. I need to go to Korea. I need to go to like drop everything and just do this. So yeah, seriously, you're an inspiration to a lot of people, 100%. Because it's like you make everything look so possible because it is possible. It's hard, but it's possible. It's hard, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that that you make it, yeah. I was too scary to take the subway, so I took a cab. And my cab driver, he was not wearing a mask. And then he was like, cough for two times. I was so nervous to be a vet. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Before I get off my cap, I, I got a mask. Do you want to wear a mask? So I 
Look at you. As grim as it is, this is the case the light just gets dark because I said it's grim. Why is it nighttime all of a sudden? 